What's up guys, Patrick here, tour guide and your guide to Barcelona. Welcome back to Barcelona. We're starting off here on La Rambla. And normally if we're heading down towards the sea, you've got the Gothic Quarter on the left side and the Raval on the right. Most times I'll head over to the Gothic Quarter where I've taken you guys a couple times already. But today we're gonna take a right. We're gonna head into the Raval and check out a different neighborhood and see what's going on today. So let's get on over there. And if you're walking down from Plaza Catalunya, which is just behind me, we're gonna take the second, we're gonna take the second street in. What I find to be one of the more beautiful streets in all of Barcelona. It's called Bon Success. It's a nice little plaza, all sorts of things that I'll point out to you as we're walking down. So you can see we've got some different shops and different restaurants around here. A lot of things are closed, but one place, Julibert Meu, is a really nice spot to come for like a traditional Catalan meal. Closed right now, but it's a good spot for lunches and those menus of the day. Another really popular shop is right back here. You can see a lot of people going in to get all sorts of different pre-made dishes or even meats and cheeses, all sorts of different products. And this is what I absolutely love. We're coming up on the plaza right behind me. And you can see just the trees and the setup. And like I said, when you walk in from La Rambla, for me, it's always been one of those places I think it's one of the best looking kind of spots in this area and a nice place to sit down and have a, have a drink. You've got Sitges, the street right here, which if you head down onto the left, there's a place, one of my favorite bars called Drapiere, which is a really nice craft beer bar. Um, it's just down the way, all sorts of different selections, and they have these kind of barrels that just keep changing out. What's really cool is you get to try different things. What's really bad is if you find a beer that you really like, you're never gonna see that beer again there, basically. It's really hard to, to make sure you get, get in there at the right time. But like I said, you have this incredible space right here. I always like to maybe have a coffee or something. You know, a lot of, see a lot of people at these different bars, different cafes. And just through a little cove here, you've got another plaza, which is always really nice. And just filled throughout the entirety of that plaza, you've got these little spots for cafes and bars. And so you'll see a lot of people out here at the tables especially on nicer days when you get the sun in here. It's really something else, right? Nice little plaza with a little bit of everything. And this is a spot that maybe isn't as hit up when tourists come, come over here, but it's just off La Rambla where a lot of people are gonna get anyway. Just take one street off and you're in the next plaza. You've got a nice spot to, to enjoy yourselves. It's quite a bit of movement up here today. And we're in, like I said before, the neighborhood is called the Raval, which comes from the old idea of being outside of the walls, right? And this area was actually incorporated a little bit later in the 1300s when they rebuilt those walls. The walls had basically gone up to La Rambla right there. And so in the 1300s, they decided to incorporate this area that had been really probably more built for churches, larger, kind of areas and there's some more space. And so what you're gonna see is this added in, became part of the old city, now very much part of the city, but really what it would have been was the outside and that name is kind of stuck till today. And it extends down towards the port uh, and actually kind of ends right where we had another video that was all about the Maritime Museum. That's where the water would have come up at the time and that's where the, this part of the city would end. I'm gonna point out this sh little bookshop right here. Shouldn't say little because it's massive. You've got La Central, which has a couple places here in Barcelona, and there's one in Madrid and one in Mallorca as well, I think. Um, but it's got a great selection. And this one here even has a nice little cafe added into it. But if you're ever looking for some books, it's in this older convent, which is a nice spot as well. I always come over here for some, some literature, you can see a cafe 
next door here, which extends out into a nice little courtyard. So it's a good spot to get a coffee as well. And I tend to think that this is an area that's a little bit less explored. That Raval, I think a lot of times we hear um, some negative things attached to it just from kind of a little bit of its history um, because it was on that outside and because it was the space where there was more more space, more area. Uh, this is where a lot of the factories came in later. So you get a lot of this immigration that comes in and it's always been a big immigrant area. So you'll see a lot of different kind of cultures in here as well. But it also was a place where there was a lot of workers. And so at the end of those 1800s, the beginning of the 1900s, what you do get is a lot of worker issues going on in Barcelona. And a lot of that took place here. So you see a lot of these protests, a lot of these riots, a lot of crime even that happened here to where one of the names for the Raval is Barrio Chino, right? And it's kind of comparing it to those places in maybe San Francisco, those lower kind of income neighborhoods. And so it's kind of always kept this, this name. But there is a lot, a lot of different things going on, a lot of different cultural things as well. Got a nice school group out here. Because like I said, this is a place to come and see a lot of the history of Barcelona, but also a lot of different cultural things. Another video that I did a little while back was all about the Contemporary Art Museum, the Makba. So coming down the road, this is a fast way to get over to that Makba. And the Makba being, like I said, that Contemporary Art Museum. It's a really nice one to get into. You can check out that video about what it actually looks like on the inside. But the Makba, if you kind of type that into YouTube or any anything, I think the number one thing that comes up is all of the skaters and the videos that they make. And you can see just all day, every day, there's these skaters out here popping their ollies, making all these videos and tricks. And what's been happening with the pandemic is that a lot of people come over here and are meeting up because groups are reduced to six. A lot of times there's too many people here so the police have to come in, especially around that curfew hour around 10 o'clock and really just move the people out. So there's not all sorts of people here, but it's a really nice open plaza that you can see. So it's a nice spot for a lot of people to come to. And during those nicer summer months, you'll see even more people out here. And we got some bars just around the corner as well. But if you're interested in more on what's going on in the Makba, make sure you check out that video I have. I'll connect it in at the top here. And so as we get away from the Makba, we're gonna get more into a little bit of the area a little bit more residential right now. You can see kind of some of the bars that are out here. Over here, some of them set up right now. Should be opening pretty soon if they're not open already. So you get a lot of different, a lot of different things going on over here. A lot of I mean, a skate shop back there but a lot of different types of restaurants, little places, like I said, a lot of different cultural ideas in the Raval. It's a very, it's a, it's a melting pot over here. Getting on to now one street that will actually take a left and cut down here. Very popular street. It's called Joaquin Costa. And it kind of stretches down from the top of the Raval down a little bit further here. It's got a lot of different restaurants and bars on it, and even some shops. You can see right there. Probably the most famous thing to happen on this street is the legend behind the vampire of Raval. And we're at number 29 of Joaquin Costa. This is where Enriqueta Marti lived. And that story about Basically, the biggest serial killer 
not only Barcelona, but all of Spain's history is tied in to this area. Another one of those kind of dark legends that has given that rise to the, the name behind the Raval, kind of that darker place, uh, which was basically a lady accused of kidnapping children, using them to create these ointments for upper class, for the upper class, and sell that, you know, with their bones, their blood, sell that off to them. Uh, and it's not known how many kids she kidnapped. They only found one in her, in her apartment, but that child was alive. And this was a huge story around the beginning of the 1900s. About 1912, she was actually arrested. And she unfortunately passed away in prison, so we never got to the end of the story. But a lot of things have been coming out that this was a, uh, a created story. She became the scapegoat for other things that were really going on and that maybe she never really did any of these things. But that story, that myth has always come around as one of the most famous. I can go into more detail maybe on another video about that, but she would have been in that apartment right there. That's where they found the child, actually. You can see an idea as we're walking by of the different shops. Yeah, a little change. In this plaza, you can see right here, this actually used to be, I used to tell people if they were looking for vegetarian places, Vegetalia was a place that had about three different spots in Barcelona, but now it looks like Fat Schmuck has opened up. Uh, I think there was a place, maybe this is, this is newer for me, but there was a place down the way, I think called Two Schmucks. Uh, so I'll have to come over, back over here and see what's going on with this place. Since 1996, it looks like. 1906, it says. So I have to come back one day and see what that's all about. A bit. Some of the shops here. You can still see there's some tourist shops along the way. And this long, closed up part over here. This was a bar. Get to the front here in just a minute. See, it looks like today's is kind of the drop-off day for a lot of these different stores. But you can see 3345, name of that bar. It's a really, really nice one, and it takes up that entire corner. That's why it's 3345, because it's number 33 until number 45. Um, I remember a buddy of mine had a birthday there and invited us over. This was years ago. And I had never been to the bar. And he kept saying, come to Joaquin Costa 3345. And so we were asking, hey, what's the name of the spot? And he just kept saying Joaquin Costa 3345. And we couldn't understand why he wouldn't tell us the name. So we got over here and realized that was the name. The street right here going down connects back out to La Rambla. So you have a lot of these streets that come kind of crisscrossing through and most of them will lead you back out to La Rambla. A lot of times if we do tours around here, people get turned around, but you can always kind of catch one of the streets back out and it'll lead you over to, to that Rambla a little bit easier to find yourself from there. But it's really connected all around the Raval. There's sorts of different metro stations and different color metro stations, different lines that'll get you where you need to be. Like I said, we're right in that center still. It's been a while since I've been over here, so just like the bar we saw before, there might be some other changes over here in the Raval. But we're heading down towards the Rambla de Raval. So right in the center, they have this big open space, which is really nice to kind of walk on. And they've got it just surrounded by all sorts of different restaurants. And it was before, like I said, there was a lot of immigrants coming in with all the different factories, but they basically were just building all of these buildings around here with these small, small streets in between. And some of that you can see as we've been walking through. This area would have just been really, really dense and just packed with all sorts of apartments in all these small streets and one of the things that they did at the turn of the century here 
is they wanted to clean that up and kind of give the Raval some sort of future. And this was one of the, the projects they had of creating this Rambla, the Raval. So we're missing a lot of these smaller buildings. But if you walk just back on the opposite way over there, you can see some of those streets. And none of them are, you know, kind of those cookie cutter streets. They're all very kind of changing and flowing, zigzagging streets that go through. But here you can see everything that was, that was changed. Get you a view from the top. Again, Plaza Catalunya, everything is in that direction, the university. And then heading down towards the port, if you can see. I know we got a lot of sun coming in. Maybe that might be a little bit better. But you can see the palm trees in here now. Try to make it look a little bit nicer. Heading all the way down to the port. And the Rambla will end, but they have a street with some bike paths that take you down uh, to great shots of the Columbus, Columbus statue. And you can see just lined with all sorts of restaurants of different types of cuisines, little bars to sit down at. Kind of see what's going on around here. But you can see this really did open up the area. Now you have this kind of sun coming in where before it would have been so condensed. Same thing happened in the Gothic Quarter, but these buildings are so condensed and small with those streets and alleyways that realistically you didn't have the sun coming in. And now you have this big, big open area. And if you're over here, one thing I always recommend is you have the Barcelo Hotel, which not right now, but when we get back to opening up, at the top, it's got a rooftop bar, a pool up there as well, and it's the 360 viewpoint where you can see basically all of Barcelona. And you get some really, really nice views. It's nice to go up during the, the, uh, the sunset times. And you get some really nice views out to the mountains, even very close to the port here, so you can see if we're into the, to the sea. We're going to stop across from the hotel, and you have the famous cat, the cat of the Raval, and this is by Botero. Colombian artist you might be familiar with, but the cat is super famous. It came around to Barcelona, I think it was the end of the 80s. And they said that they had moved it around to all these different spots. It just never found a home. And finally, it's kind of been adopted here in the Raval. It's become a staple. Uh, apparently the whiskers on the cat have been changed out a bunch of times because people just love to climb on it. So go a little bit closer here. You can see the whiskers. If you're climbing up, they're just breaking off. I put them back on there. But people love to climb up on this thing. It's a lot harder than you think, a little bit higher than you think. But basically, if you get up on that tail and shimmy on over, you can get up and you'll see a lot of kids, a lot of people taking those pictures around here. But now it's become really famous. And what they've added in, in the last couple years are these little benches, these little circles you can see. The people out just enjoying themselves. Kind of sit around, have a nice little chat with your neighbors. Looks like most of these bars are closed down. Obviously with less people here, still, as I said, not as maybe as many people come in, but it's still just right off La Rambla. You still get a lot of visitors. And it looks like these places are closed. Still a little bit before lunchtime, so that might be the other case. But you see a lot of shops across the way. Just even closed down. And I got a question in one of my other videos about Cien Montaditos, if anyone's ever been over there. 
It's a place that on Wednesdays and Sundays for one euro, you basically get everything. But these small little, kind of like pinchos, but like pieces of bread, more like little tiny sandwiches uh, with all sorts of different fillings are put in. And you can see right over here, this one's closed. So the answer to that question, I said I hadn't been by one in quite a little bit of time, but you can see that one closed right there. Maybe in more popular, populated places as well, you might get some of those open. I did walk by one in, in, in the mall the other day, and that was open. But you can see this one closed right here. But some of these other places are still open. And it looks like La Paciencia. La Paciencia right there. Nice bar. That one's opening up right now. That's a good sign. That's always been a really nice one. Good coffees, vermouth. It's right on the corner, so it's a popular spot. And we're right down at the end of the Rambla de Raval. And you can see that's the street I was telling you about before. That's really going to just open up and take you down towards the Columbus statue, towards that port. But what we're going to do is we're going to cut off and head over to basically the oldest church in Barcelona. And we can kind of finish up over here. This is San Pau de Cam. And so we're kind of getting outside of, remember if this was not uh, inside of those old walls, those medieval walls of Barcelona, this church would have been on the outside. And that's why the name San Pau de Cam, St. Paul of the countryside, is, it was given to the church. So this road, they say basically, would have been leading out of those old walls of Barcelona from what is today La Rambla, and would have come past this church, which would have had bigger kind of fields along with it. And it would have led you up towards Monjuic, where they had the quarry. You got a lot of that stone. This would have been one of the ways to get over to the mountain. You can see the church. We're approaching it right up here. So there's writings from the church as early as the 9th century, those 800s. And it's a spot that obviously isn't as visited as some of the other more popular churches, like the Sagrada Familia or Santa Maria del Mar. But nonetheless, a huge part of the history of Barcelona carried out over here. And you can do some visits. It's been closed from those for a while. See if I can jump over. You gotta be careful on this street because it's pretty small. And cars and mopeds and everything come flying through. I'm gonna stick the camera here through the bars and see if we can get a little bit of a view onto the inside. It looks like they're doing some renovation, some cleaning. It's got like the smallest Roman cloister in the world or something like that on the inside. I think if I remember correctly, it is the world. Definitely Europe, but they do usually have some, some visits, which is always really interesting, about three euros to get in. Right across the way while we're talking about that, you can see El Pachuco. Very, very famous bar over here. Really good Mexican restaurant. Let's see if you can see that facade right there to the church. So maybe a lot smaller than it, it would have been in the past. But this is what we have that's left over. And you can see, oh, it looks like they do have some, some guided tours. They've got masses that are still open you can see 12 o'clock seven and seven o'clock and then they've got guided visits at 12 45 right? but you've got a limited capacity all right and they're talking you can see a picture of the 13th century cloister right there so if you want to make a reservation to get over into the church that's what you got to do for those guided visits well, those groups are probably pretty small at this time and they only had that one time so you can see there's probably not much of a demand for it right now 
We'll continue on out. Actually, we'll finish up over by the Metro, saying there's a lot of different connections. And just around the corner, you've got the Metro stop Parallel. So we're going to be on the Parallel Street, which is basically the end of the Raval. And then kind of where you enter into the neighborhood, that would be Poplasek. And now you're right at the base of that mountain of Monjuic. You got a school right here. I don't know if you can hear it well. I'm sure you can hear the kids in the background there. And just so you can have an idea, if you know the skyline of Barcelona, where we're headed, you've got the three chimneys right there, which were the old power plant, power company here in Barcelona. And that's a really famous old factory uh, for its role that it played in the eight hour workday here in Barcelona and all of Spain. Um, and kind of just the different workers' rights, the workers' movements, the riots that went on here in Barcelona. And now that chimney, those chimneys are actually part of the park of the three chimneys. And so if you're over in Barcelona, you notice those three chimneys. But if you go over, it's a skate park and it's also a graffiti park. And one of the big things, maybe you've noticed that we were walking around, see a lot of different graffiti over in the Raval, all over Barcelona, realistically. But the nice part about the Three Chimneys is that you have a free graffiti park. And it's something that's really interesting, but you can basically paint, you can reserve these walls, and you won't get punished for, or any of those fines for graffitiing, but you can paint on those days that you reserve them. But the thing is that those walls will change constantly. They're always changing to different, different people coming in but it's a nice little idea on that side of the street. Give you an idea of it over on this side of the street as well. You can see this wall, which I absolutely love. This wall changes maybe about once a month. And you can see right now it's Badass Bears, who's one of the, the artists over here in Barcelona. I really like the work, but very kind of cartoony, but you'll see these, these bears all around. So the, the artist always gets you know a nice little shout out. You can see it just above the ladies over there where it says Badass Bears. And you've got a whole idea of this wall. Like I said, that'll change about every month. And so I've come over here and seen it in being painted. Actually, remember, got some pictures. Maybe I can, can find them of when they were just starting this right here. And I remember it was just the TMB sign that was up. And you can see the entirety of that. All right, and so this one will change about every single month. Across the way, I don't know if you can make it out, but those will change. You know, it could change by the day, the week, the month. Just whoever comes in and reserves those walls. One of those initiatives that's going down. But we saw a little bit, just a little bit of that Revolve. There's still many, many more streets to walk down, many to see. But I wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of a different neighborhood. Like I said, usually we go over to the Gothic Quarter. It's like a left from that Rambla. Today, jumping over to the right, we can visit again some other days. If you have any questions, anything you want to know, let me know below and we can get to those in the next couple videos right there. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you haven't done so already, remember you can always subscribe to the channel for more about Barcelona as I'm trying to bring it to you while we can't travel right now. We'll get back there someday. But until then, keep checking out the videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.